Okay, welcome to this video. I'm going to explain the way I use Cubase. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different topics, probably 15 or 20. But this first one is how I use uh, templates. I like to have a folder on the desktop um, as a template because I tweak the template for plugins and settings and different information on the timeline. So um, I have a template here for VO. So what I would normally do would just hit on, I'm on a Mac. So Apple D to duplicate and it copies the folder. And then I have a little app in here that I made with Apple script. I'm going to rename this folder name and the project name. So we just double click this and it's going to say, what's the name? So we'll just call it new project and you hit okay. And boom, new project folder name, new project for the file name. It's that simple. And if you want to learn how to do this, here's the script right here. Here's how it's done. It's very simple. Um, you can comment. I could send it to you or uh, maybe put a link. But at any rate, this is how I work with projects on the desktop because if you're working with a if you're going to master something or if your project is in 48k or 44.1 or whatever um, the templates right here on the desktop and that's how I like to work so I have a you know I'm in the uh, music folder and uh, Cubase 10 projects so just want to let you know about that one this video is about markers I use markers all the time and there's two different types. There's a section marker for duration of time and then there's just a single point marker. And over here on the left, when you select the marker track, if there's brackets, that means that this marker is a duration marker and this is just a point marker. That's what I'm calling them. It's not a Steinberg thing. But one thing I want you to know is that uh, when you want to navigate to these guys, if this isn't set up right, it's a pain. If you hit the editor button, you're going to get the marker window. And this is set up correctly, where this little arrow to the right, if you click here, you're going to go to that marker. So if you click on two, you're going to jump to that marker, which in my work, I do all the time. But I'm on a 15 inch MacBook Pro and real estate's at a premium and I don't want to be clicking around a lot. So the way you get this little triangle guy to be up over here is this. This is the way that I've found out to do this. You make this window really, really small, and then you're going to scroll down to the bottom, and you're going to scroll over to the right, and then go back up to the top, and there's your little triangle marker. If it's not, you can kind of scroll over to the right or to the left until you find your header, and then you drag. So we're going to just click this guy and drag it all the way to the left. And you want it to be the first one in the list. And there it is. And then you can put the window back down low. Now you can see the marker. So you can click. You can go right to number one, number two, section marker number three. And also makes it really easy to just double click and type in a description for that marker. So um, I guess that's about it for markers. This shortcut's about using key commands. On the Mac, I have it mapped for Apple and comma will bring up preferences and Apple and period will bring up the key commands. Key commands is where you can assign so many key uh, shortcuts to umpteen million different parameters in Cubase. So I do that um, and you save it, save your little key command set um, then you have to recall it. If you have to recall it, and if you want to make a change, you hit the save disk and overwrite. But uh, yeah, I have in this bunch of tutorials um, a lot of key commands, shortcuts to expedite the workflow. Okay, here's four shortcuts in one. I have mapped a shortcut, if you want to go to the beginning of a clip, select the clip, and you hit L, and your cursor goes right to the beginning of the clip. If you want to bring the clip to the cursor, you click 
control L and it'll move. What about if you want to sync to a different point in that clip? So for me, this is a whoosh. Suppose you want the apex of the whoosh to be the sync point. I have mapped the letter V to that clip. Now you can see that little line. That's the sync point. Normally it's the start of the clip. Now it's the sync point. Here's another shortcut. Uh, I think they call it edit mode or video follows audio. So you click on the clip and you hit, I have it mapped to E. So we hit E and the cursor line is going to go away. And now if I show the video and I also have Q and W mapped to move the clip one frame left or one frame right. So what we want to do is have this whoosh come in right in the middle right there where the blue line is right in the middle. So that's where the apex of this whoosh is going to be. So as you're moving the audio, it's moving the video with it. I do a lot of audio to video stuff. And man, this just speeds up uh, your syncing and spotting sound effects very, very quickly. So if we jump back here, get out of E mode. Okay. And uh, there's one more I got to show you here in this little bunch. We're going to have a couple of clips here on the timeline. And we have snap turned on and I like to use events plus cursor. Okay. So when the sync point is at the front of the clip, you move the clip and it bumps right into it. Well, what if you want it to be off like a frame? If you hold down command on the Mac and I believe it's control on the PC, you can actually drag it back a little bit. It kind of disables snapping. So if you don't want it to snap, you just hold down command and then it'll let you put it wherever you want. So those are four shortcuts. And if we go into preferences and we click L, locate selection to start. That's when you hit L, the cursor goes to the beginning. If you hit control L, move to the cursor. So it's going to move the clip to the cursor. If you hit V, snap point to cursor, that's where it's going to put the sync point wherever you put the cursor in the middle of the clip. And the last one I told you, if you just hold down command on the Mac and control on a PC, it kind of disables uh, the snapping. Another bit of information I wanted to show you, I just in a previous uh, explanation, I said if you hit the L and it's mapped to the event, it's going to go to the beginning of that, but it also works on automation dots. So if it's selected and you hit L, it'll jump right to there. So uh, I have mine set up to not go to the next clip, but the next event. So that's why when you, it, that's an event and you hit L, it's going to jump to there. Also, uh, B and N, N would be next event, not clip, but event. So N is going to the beginning or ending of a clip on that track, and B would be the before. So B, 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 and N, 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 and that's how you can jump around at different clips on your timeline. This next section has to do with automation. If you pop down the automation window, we're in volume. We're going to automate volume. We're up here with the uh, selection object and you can click and you can write automation dots. Okay. But if on the Mac, if you hold down the option key, you can actually draw curves and then it will delete a lot of the dots just so it doesn't have a load on the processor, I suppose. And it just gives you uh, what you need to get the job done. And I'm all for minimalist dot writing. And here's another trick I want to show you. Suppose you want to move all these dots, okay, these automation dots. So if you click on them and move them, see how they can go up and down and they can kind of get kind of squirrely, but you don't want that. You only want to move them down the line. So this is what you do on a Mac. The minute you start to drag to the right, you immediately hold command and they will not go up and down, they will only go left and right. So if I drag to the right and hit Command, 
Now it's constrained only to the left and right. I cannot go up and down. Even though I'm dragging up and down, it only goes to the left and right. So if you need to move your automation down a little ways, and you want to keep it without modifying it, that's how you do it. If you have a bunch of automation on your track that you want to get rid of, and you select it and you delete it, well, now the volume fader is at minus 16. If you want to set that to normal, again, on the Mac, it's just Command and click, and it goes right back to zero. Okay, here's another shortcut about moving data within a clip. Here we've got a little song. If I make it shorter, but I want the end, this is how long my edit needs to be, but I want the ending to be here. If I hold Option Command and click and drag, I'm not moving the, where the clip is, but I'm moving the contents within the clip. And you can see the ending is right there. So maybe if you want to line up the ending, the last note lined up with that little marker, that's the way you do it. I do that all the time also. I just quickly put in a clip, especially if it's a sound effect and maybe it's 10 seconds long, but I only need the, the middle five seconds or something like that. You just shorten it up and then you just move it to where you find a point where you need. Here's another key command that I use all the time. It's called select from cursor to end. And if you had some stuff going on in your timeline, like the producer says, you know, some guy's talking and take out that sentence and then pull everything up. So I have it mapped to control option command period or above that is the right pointing, uh, you know, arrow. Hit those three keys and the period and it's going to select everything from the cursor to the end. So all markers... All, all tracks, all clips to the right. It doesn't select the one that it's on, only if it's after. And then you can just drag everything and pull it up. I do it all the time. Uh, it's a great tool. Select from cursor to end, map it to a key and use it. Okay, this next explanation is going to be what I call ADR. Steinberg calls it lanes, but what we have is a sentence of somebody talking. Suppose this was shot in the field, like on a movie set or something, and a plane flew overhead, and it ruined the take, but the guy kind of said his line okay. But they have to redo it. They're, they don't have time on the set to redo it. They do it later. So in, in editing here, we uh, bring another track. So we're going to have the original source on its own track, and then we're going to record new stuff on a separate track. You turn lanes on, and now this thing's going to loop. When you have your loop on, it's going to loop, and you try to say exactly what he is saying in tempo with him, and it's going to record each take on a different lane. And you could have, you know, 50. Uh, try to keep it to about 10, but, you know, however you're going to work. And then you can slice up each part of each take or each lane, and the bottom one will be the final composite, and I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to go into record mode here, and we're going to give it a try. Kids, take a few moments to affirm all the things that you like about your parents. Kids, Kids take, take a few, few moments, moments to affirm all the things, things that, that you like about, about your parents. parents. Kids, Kids, take a, take few, a few moments to affirm all, all the things, things that, that you like about your parents. parents. Kids, take, take a few moments to affirm all the things that you like about your parents. Okay. So there's all the takes. So here's what you would do. You can get rid of ones that aren't any good. You can take the three tool and you can slice up and slice and you can slice all these things. And then what you do is you take the good part. So that's a good one. So we'll take that take. And if you hold shift uh, command, it goes straight down. That's from take one. This would be from take two. Now we've got a composite take. And the bottom one is what you're going to hear. Kids, Kids take, take a few moments to affirm all, all the things that you like, like about, about your parents. parents. So we're hearing only this last part and also this upper track here, but we can mute this guy, the original. Kids, take a few moments to affirm all the things that you like about your parents. So that's how we do ADR. 
Okay, what you see in this picture here is an example of uh, ADR. And I have a uh, portable MacBook Pro 15 inch running on Cubase with a Focusrite Scarlett 2 input inter interface. And I've got a lav mic on the uh, producer. And um, you're gonna see him in a minute doing the live shot. I think it was in Peru. And um, it was really bad. The camera guy was in the boat and um, it was horrendous. So he came back and we looped it in Cubase. We did it outside. He wanted to give it that outdoor sound and feel. And um, yeah, so this is his setup and he does, I, I have it looped. So he does three takes, maybe four. I think somebody came in the door. They opened up the door to the building and they kind of killed a take, but we got three good ones out of it. And um, then what you're gonna see right after is the finished, the before and the after finished product. So, when we want to get out to the medical clinic, the Operation Blessing team has to go by boat. So, when we want to get out to the medical clinic, the Operation Blessing team has to go by boat. So, when we want to get out to the medical clinic, the Operation Blessing team has to go by boat. Roland? Se grabando. During the dry season, this is a dirt road. During the rainy season, kids are swimming in the street. The river rises about 20 feet. So, if you want to get out to the medical clinic, the Operation Blessing team has to go by boat. During the dry season, this is a dirt road. During the rainy season, kids are swimming in the street. The river rises about 20 feet. So, when we want to get out to the medical clinic, the Operation Blessing team has to go by boat. This section is about offline processing. I have a clip here. I'm going to put some EQ on it. So I'm going to hold down control click. I'm going to go to EQ, Studio EQ. And just like that, I just applied this EQ to this clip. But I want you to know that if you move a parameter, you're going to get a little gear over here. And that's going to be the, applying the effect to the clip. And when that's done, then it's applied. So if I just drag the EQ, boom. And just like that, that fast. When you see that thing done spinning, then it's been applied. Also, if you want to have a memory bank down here for a favorite, you could drag this down here and you can instantly click and you can apply, you know, normalize or EQ or compression or whatever you want. So that's also very um, speedy for me in my work when I need to always apply a filter or a processing to a clip. Um, I love this direct processing window and the ability to apply processing to a clip. Okay, this little section is about uh, what I call null clips or spacers. So, but to start off, um, everybody probably already knows this, but if you already have a track, has a name on it, and you record on it, you're going to get that track name is going to be on the clip. And if you do multiple recordings, you're going to get uh, underscore 01, 02, 03. So um, anyway, to get to the uh, spacer part, um, I was doing an audio book and they needed to have a one second, uh, you know, blank before and at the end of the, of the clip. So what I can do here is just make this track called space okay and if you zoom out and if I were to like click on this uh, clip here and hit P you're gonna get this selection this marker selection but if you double click within this selection boom there's your null clip there's your space it doesn't do anything, but it has the word space on it, and you could make this, they wanted it to be one second long, so you could just make this one second long, and then you could put that right at the start of your audio clip. 